Hello everyone, I'm Aditya Nanduri, a senior data platform specialist at Snowflake, and I'm excited to introduce you to our cohort builder application developed using Streamlit. The cohort builder is an innovative tool designed to streamline the process of creating, managing, and scheduling cohorts for data analysis and business intelligence purposes. This application serves as a powerful aid for analysts, data scientists, allowing you to segment data into specific groups based on the shared characteristics. Whether you're looking to analyze user behavior, track product performance, or understand demographic trends, the Cohort Builder makes it easy and simple for you. With an intuitive user design and robust functionality, our Cohort Builder enables you to quickly define cohorts, manage existing cohorts, and schedule automatic refreshes, ensuring that you have proper insights that you need to make informed decisions. Today, I'll walk you through on how to use this application and demonstrate some of its key features. Let's dive in. Now let's look at how we could deploy the Cohort Builder application into our Snowflake account. First, go to the GitHub repo, open the SQL folder, then the app underscore setup.sql file. Copy the whole code and go into Snowflake, open a new SQL worksheet, paste the code that you've copied, select all, and say run all. This should deploy all the objects that are necessary for the Cohort Builder application. Now let's switch to the role that we just created called the Cohort Builder role. Next, go back to the Git, Git uh, repository and download the home.python file, the environment.yaml file, and the two Python files in the pages folder. Now let's go back to Snowflake and upload this into the stage that we have created. Open the database, app schema, stages, and the stage. Now upload the files that you've just downloaded. Make sure you specify the path for stages before you upload the two Python files in the folder. With this, we've uploaded all the files that are necessary for the Streambit application that we have created uh, in the SQL script that we've run earlier. Let's get into our Streamlit application now. Now, click on Projects, Streamlit, and open the Cohort Builder application that we've just deployed. This will open up the Streamlit application within Snowflake. Now, the homepage gives you a quick overview of all the functionalities that are available in the Cohort Management application or the Cohort Builder. Now, let's go ahead and create our first cohort. First, we need to select a dataset that we have access to. For the sake of this demo, we are using a marketing dataset that belongs to the Customer Relationship Management team. This dataset contains a comprehensive customer information, their purchase history, including demographics, contact details, and behavioral interactions. This makes it a very a good candidate for demoing our cohort builder functionalities. Once you select the database, you could see the number of rows the dataset contains, the total memory it occupies in Snowflake, and the number of columns that we are dealing with. This brings us to the second step of the process, the data dictionary. This page gives you a comprehensive view of all the column names and their data types will also display any descriptions that are available in the table definitions. Then, this will allow you to select the various filter types that you want to play with while building your cohort, and also allows you to select if you want to use the column as a primary filter or a secondary filter. In the Cohort Builder application, the primary filters are the main criteria that are used to define the core characteristics of the cohort. These could be columns like age code, gender, or state code. The secondary filters provide additional criteria used to refine the cohort. This structure allows the cohort builder to easily extract distinct values and date ranges for the secondary filters in use, even for very large datasets, enabling a more streamlined approach while filtering all the datasets to build a cohort. This page also allows you to use Snowflake Cortex LLMs to go ahead and fill in all the filter types and the primary filters that are necessary for building a specific cohort for any dynamic data set you might end up using. Let's say for the sake of this demo, we are trying to build a cohort to run an email campaign on. And this email campaign is targeted towards 
female users who have been active in the last couple of years and are in a specific age bracket and are in the west coast of the United States. So for this, let's go ahead and select our primary filters, the last open date that will give their recent activity. This I'm going to select as an advanced date filter to make it easy for me to make the last couple of years selection. Next is my age bucket. So I'm going to go ahead and select the age code group as one of the second primary filters and make this a multi-select dropdown. Now I also want to target this to only the female users. So I'm going to go ahead and select the gender column as my third primary filter. With this, let's go into our secondary filters. I also want to filter down the data set to only my users in the West Coast. So I'm going to go ahead and select the state code as my secondary filter and make it a multi-select dropdown again. Next, I also, because I'm running an email campaign, I want to select my email and make sure my email uh, uh, column is not blank. So for this, I'm going to select email as my secondary filter and assign a text filter value to that. Now, with my selections confirmed, I could go ahead and look at all the columns that I have selected. Now, when I click on confirm selections, what happens in the background is the processor goes in and identifies all the distinct values for all the textual columns that are available and the ranges for all the numeric and date columns and pulls in all these values for the primary filters. Now, we can click on build cohort and look at our filters that we've selected. So first, only the primary filters are displayed to you. And then you can go ahead and select your date range. Here, I'm trying to target users in the 18 to 45 age range. So I'll go ahead and make that selection. Filter down my data set to female. Finally, you filter down my uh, data set to users who have been active in the last couple of years. So I will go ahead and apply my filters. What this will do is this will go in, filter down my data set, pull in the number of rows and identify any distinct values for textual columns and the value ranges for numeric and date columns and populate them for all the secondary filters that have been selected. As you can see, all the state codes that are available in these 11.7K rows are pulled across. Now let's go ahead and select our state codes to be California and Washington. Next, let's set our email condition to not be blank. Finally, let's go ahead and apply our secondary filters. This will further filter down the data set to 778 users. So now that we've defined our cohort, uh, let's go ahead and see any the query that is being run in the background for building this cohort. As you can see, all the filters that you've been selected have been converted into SQL filters and being applied to the data set. Finally, you can also go in and select all the columns that you want to look at in your cohort. In this case, I'm going to select email, first name, last name, age, city, state, county. Once I have my column selected, I could go ahead and save my cohort and give it a name. This will save the cohort for anyone to come back and automatically open up this cohort and see all the filters that have been applied on top of this. And the data in the backend is automatically refreshed. So the next time, if new data comes into the, the background table, the cohort automatically updates itself and shows you the new number of rows that are now currently available for you to work with. Now that we've created our cohort and saved it, let's look into the scheduling options. The cohort builder gives you three options for scheduling your cohorts. The first one is a dynamic table. You could go ahead and select your dynamic table name and specify the lag value and the refresh mode. This will go ahead and create a dynamic table on the background, which will provide you near real time data updates reflecting the most current information available in the background tables. Next, you could also create snapshot tables. Similarly, you specify the snapshot table name and the refresh cadence. This will provide a historical record of the cohort characteristics and metrics, allowing you for tracking changes over time. The last option is a one-time table. 
This will store all the data that is available in your cohort into a table. For the sake of the demo, let's go ahead and create a one-time table. And let's call this female active users. So just with a click of a button, you have created your cohort and also saved it into a table. You could choose to activate this cohort using any third-party tools or any other frameworks that might be available in the Snowflake Solution Center. The existing cohorts page within this cohort builder gives you an overview of all the predefined or previously created cohorts within the application. Here we can see cohort has been created previously called recently active male users. Let's go ahead and select this cohort. This will go ahead and pull the background metadata that is associated with this cohort and build the query that has been selected initially while creating it. And when you click on build cohort page, this will populate all the filters that have been selected while building this cohort, allowing you to quickly analyze existing cohorts and modify them if necessary. This brings us to the end of this demo. Thank you for joining me in exploring the Cohort Builder application. If you are interested in implementing this or a customized version of this solution for your organization or need any assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to your Snowflake sales engineer. They are ready to help you enhance your data capabilities with tailored solutions that fit your needs. If you found this demonstration helpful, please like and subscribe for more Snowflake developer content. We are here to help you leverage the power of Snowflake to transform your data into insights. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.